In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create this paper montage transition in Premiere Pro. Alright, I've imported a video clip into the timeline, and you can choose any footage of your preference. To create a captivating paper montage transition, we first need to gather some images. I have already imported several images into the project panel for this purpose. Start by selecting all the images you want to use. After selecting, right-click on the highlighted images to open a context menu. From this menu, click on Speed and Duration to adjust the timing. In the Duration dialog box, I will set the duration of each image to approximately 24 frames, ensuring a smooth transition between them. Once that's done, let's drag and drop all the images into the timeline, ensuring they are arranged in the order we want. To create an engaging paper montage transition, we'll need some specific assets. I already have a collection of beautiful paper texture overlays and a sound effect on my computer. You can easily download them using the link provided in the video description. Once we have everything ready, we need to drag the first paper texture overlay and position it right on top of the first image in the timeline. After that, we need to select set to frame size to adjust its resolution. Next, Next, we will navigate to the Effect Controls panel. Here, we need to adjust the scale parameter. Setting this value to around 30 will create the desired effect. Additionally, we will modify the blending mode to screen from the list of options. This change will allow the texture to beautifully blend with the image below it. In the next step, we will begin by selecting the first image and meticulously adjusting its scale properties to ensure it fits seamlessly within our design. Once that's done, we will use the pen tool to carefully trace around the edges of the paper texture, creating a precise mass. This technique will not only enhance the visual depth, but also lend a dynamic, textured appearance to our overall composition. Alright, we have successfully created the mask for the first image, let's shift our focus to the Lumetri color panel. In this section, we will make adjustments to the RGB curves to enhance the image's contrast. By carefully manipulating the curves, we can fine-tune the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights, resulting in a more dynamic and visually engaging image. Once we have completed the initial steps, the next task is to choose the first paper texture and the image to make them nest. I'm going to call this scene 1. Once everything looks good, simply click on OK to finalize the creation of the nested sequence. Following this process, you will need to repeat it for all other images, carefully customizing each one with different paper texture overlays, ensuring that each is saved as a separate nested sequence for easy access and organization. Alright, now you can see in the timeline, we have customized all the images and paper texture overlays. In the upcoming step, we will focus on adding some effects to the first image. To begin with, I will apply a transform effect, which allows us to manipulate the image's position and scale. Following that, we will introduce a brightness and contrast effect to enhance the image's overall look and feel. Next, let's go to the Effect Controls panel to customize all the effects. Firstly, make sure the time indicator is at the beginning of the first image. We will create keyframes for the scale parameter, initially setting the value at 100. After that, move the time indicator four frames forward. At this point, I'll adjust the scale property to about 110, providing a slight zoom effect that adds depth. To achieve a more dynamic visual experience, we can enable motion blur, which will be accomplished by increasing the shutter angle value. Again, ensure that the time indicator is positioned at the start of the first image. Next, let's create keyframes for the brightness parameter with the value 100. Now move the time indicator two frames forward. At this point, I will adjust the brightness value down to around zero. In the next step, I will begin by selecting the two effects I want to use and copying them. Once that's done, it's important to select all the remaining images in the timeline so I can paste the copied effects onto each one, ensuring a consistent look throughout. Next, I will carefully move the time indicator to the very beginning of the first image to set the starting point. From there, I will move the time indicator precisely four frames forward. This is crucial as I prepare to position the second image. I will drag and drop it into place in the designated area, making sure it aligns perfectly with the first. Following the same procedure, I will move the time indicator another four frames forward. This sets up the next phase, where I will drag the third image and carefully position it in the next spot. It's imperative to maintain a consistent four-frame gap between each image to ensure a seamless flow of visuals. I will continue this process for the remaining images, always keeping that four-frame interval in mind as I organize them in the timeline. As you can see, we have positioned all the images one by one. Lastly, we need to cut off all the images at the four-frame position of the last image. Once we do that, you will be able to view a preview of our transition effect. Next, let's select the first image and fine-tune its rotation, setting it to a negative 24 degrees. We will then vary the rotation values for each subsequent image, creating a visually dynamic and engaging effect that enhances the overall presentation. All right, now you can see the transition effect with rotation. 
In the following step, I am going to select all the images to make them nest. I am going to call this main. After that, I am going to apply a transform effect to the main layer to add a zoom animation. We can create keyframes for the scale parameter with the value 100. Next, move the time indicator to the end position of the transition. Here, I am going to make the scale value around 105. After making these adjustments, you can see the changes on the program monitor. Lastly, let's create a new adjustment layer in the project panel, ensuring it matches the same settings as our existing sequence. Once we have established the new layer, we can simply drag and drop it onto the timeline. To to refine our transition effect, adjust the duration of the adjustment layer to be approximately 3 frames longer. Position this layer right at the start of the transition. Next, we will apply a brightness and contrast effect to the adjustment layer. Navigate to the Effect Controls panel, where we will fine-tune the brightness and contrast settings. First, make sure the time indicator is positioned at the very beginning of the adjustment layer. Now let's create keyframes for the brightness parameter. Start by setting the brightness value to 0. Then move the time indicator one frame forward. At this point, adjust the brightness value to around 100. After that, move the time indicator two frames forward again and revert the brightness value back to 0. This sequence of adjustments will produce an eye-catching flash effect enhancing our transition seamlessly. Finally, let's duplicate the adjustment layer. Carefully position this duplicated layer at the end position of the transition to ensure a cohesive visual flow. With these couple of steps, we have created the paper effect transition. Lastly, we need to incorporate the sound effect to enhance the visual effects. This audio element will help create a more dynamic and attention-grabbing experience for the audience. In this way, you can create a really simple and nice paper effect transition in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like the video and leave a comment.